For our next example of the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, remember this is our fast way of taking definite integrals. We are gonna look at the integral from negative pi over two to positive pi over two of sine x dx. Okay, so first thing here is to identify what our antiderivative is gonna be. So our function here is sine x and the antiderivative of that, remember is not just cosine x because the derivative of cosine would be negative sine. So we need this to be negative cosine x for our antiderivative. Okay, so we've got that antiderivative. And so what we're gonna do is put it in our evaluation brackets here, negative cosine x and put in our limits of integration because we're about to plug those in. And so remember our fundamental theorem says that we can plug the upper limit into the antiderivative and then subtract and plug the lower limit into the antiderivative. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna take negative cosine of pi over two, plugging in that upper limit of integration. And then we're gonna subtract and plug in our lower limit of integration, negative pi over two. Okay. And in this case, think about your trig, uh, pi over two and negative pi over two both happen to be places where the cosine equals zero. Think back to your unit circle that's right here and right here. So we just have zero minus zero. And so we're gonna get zero overall for this integral. Okay. And yeah, if you feel like that's a little weird, um, we can definitely look at what's going on here in this problem with our approach of thinking about net area. So let's graph this real quick. So on a graph, let's make a nice little sine function. Okay, so I'm gonna call this pi over two pi. That would be negative pi over two and negative pi. Okay, and we want this to go from negative one to positive one, like the trig function sine and cosine do, and graph your sine function. Okay, starts at zero, goes up to one, back to zero. And so this would be the portion of the sine curve that we're looking at there. And then we can complete one period of the sine function by doing that, basically. Okay, so there's our sine function. And we are looking at the integral of this function from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And so the net area that we're looking at is this portion and this portion, okay? And remember that the areas, when we're looking at net area, um, pieces above the x-axis count as positive and pieces below the x-axis count as negative. And we have two symmetrical pieces there. So the area is just kind of negating itself. Um, the net area on this cancels out. So that's actually just confirming what we saw with the fundamental, fundamental theorem um, is that the integral is actually gonna be zero. So, we can see that with FTC or we can see that with net area. It agrees, which is kind of nice to see there. All right. Now let's look at one more example. And here, um, okay, little spoiler alert, there is gonna be a twist on this problem. But if we just look at this problem, don't think about it too much right now. 
you might say, okay, well, I'm going to integrate this. We're going from negative one to positive one. This is x to the negative two dx. And so I could find the antiderivative of that. Sure. This is x to the negative one. Make that negative. Okay. Do to do, do. So far, so good, right? Wrong. But <laughs> I'm just showing you that you can feel like you're doing everything right sometimes. I'm plugging in my upper limits. I'm plugging in my lower limits. Uh, looks like we're going to get negative 1 minus 1, and that would be negative 2. Question mark? No. <laughs> So this is actually not the answer. We cannot do any of this stuff. Okay. Now, look at the theorem, our fundamental theorem of calculus, and see why not. Let's go back and look here. Okay. If you're just looking in the box for the theorem, you might say, okay, well, looks fine to me, but look at what our criteria was up here. If f of x is continuous on the interval from a to b, and big F is an antiderivative, etc., but this, this is the part that's messing us up on this example here. Okay, so f of x, our integrand, needs to be a continuous function on the interval that's given by our limits of integration. In this example here, this 1 over x squared is not a continuous function on this interval from negative 1 to 1. Okay, this function is discontinuous at x equals 0. I feel like I spelled that wrong. Yes, I did. <laughs> discontinuous. There we go. At x equals 0. So we cannot apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So FTC does not apply here. OK. Yes, yeah, so f of x needs to be continuous on our interval. What we're actually looking at here, this is function 1 over x squared, which does something like this. Okay. All right, it's got these two swooshy curves and a nice big vertical asymptote at x equals 0. All right, so there's that big infinite discontinuity right in the middle of this thing. So yeah, we actually cannot integrate this with the FTC. And this, we've already looked at this type of thing, actually, I think um, back when we were looking at areas, that type of thing. Um, this type of integral is actually going to be in Calc 2. We don't handle these in this class. There is actually a way to handle these, but it's not going to just be our standard FTC. FTC doesn't apply here. I'll make a note. F of x must be continuous on our interval. OK, interval from A to B. And so that's something when you're going through these problems that you'll just want to do a very, very quick check at the beginning. Um, most of the problems are going to be set up to be fine, but just look really quickly at your function. See if there's any immediately apparent discontinuities. And so here we could see, okay, yes, this is going to be discontinuous at zero. If the interval did not include zero, we would be fine. Like if the interval here was going from two to three, that would be totally okay. We'd be avoiding that discontinuity, it'd be fine. But the fact that it goes from negative one to one 
and covers or includes this huge discontinuity at zero there, that is what is causing an issue here. All right, so just remember to do a very, very quick check for discontinuities before you jump right into your FTC, because sometimes it doesn't apply. Okay, so um, to summarize our FTC, we'll do this little uh, look at the main points here. And the main point of FTC part one was that differentiation, that is taking derivatives, and integration, taking integrals, are inverse processes. Okay. They're like opposite operations. Um, you can think of these as things that undo each other, like adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing, exponentials and logarithms in some cases. Um, so yeah, derivatives and integrals undo each other. And we were seeing that in FTC part one back up here because we were taking the derivative of an integral and we were just ending up with basically the integrand function spit back to us. Okay, so derivatives and integrals will undo each other. And then the main point of FTC part two is that this is a quick way to evaluate definite integrals. All right, it lets you no longer have to fuss with the Riemann sum process. We just get to find the antiderivative as long as the function is continuous on the interval. Just find the antiderivative and plug in your lower and upper limits of integration and subtract upper minus lower, and then you'll have your result, which is really pretty. Okay, so yeah, those are the main points of the fundamental theorem of calculus.